Hey, what's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this week's episode of Revealed. The kitchen installation is well underway in our Charlestown project. So we're gonna walk you through some of the face frame installation and how we're going about doing this. It starts here in the shop. We gang build all of our face frames. So what that means is our individual cabinets end up getting screwed together and built as one unit. First, we build all of our cases and then we build the frames to fit those cases exactly. From there, we move into actually building each individual door to fit within those space frames. This helps hide any seams and it keeps everything nice and clean. This does get a little bit tricky when we go to install. For example, here we have this space frame that goes from wall to wall. So we need to scribe both of these ends to fit this perfectly. There's not a lot of room for error and there's not a lot of wiggle room within these two walls. So we have to make sure that everything is spot on. On this project, it was an addition that we had a full gut of the area. So we had control over the framing of the walls as well as the plaster. And in this case, these walls were pretty much dead on. There wasn't a ton of scribing that needed to happen. These are basically straight cuts with the track saw with only minor scribing needed. Not every face frame gets scribed wall to wall. Some are free floating like the island frames where we're not captured between any walls so there's no scribe. But then there's others where we have no scribe on the actual face frame itself but the return panel butts up to the wall so there is some scribing that has to be done there. We roughly put the face frame into place, level it off and we're able to get a scribe line that we can then cut to. Again, because these walls were so flat, this was basically a straight cut with the track saw and some minor scribing. When we get to things like scribing a farmhouse sink into that face frame, this is something totally different and much more challenging. James has created this three-piece jig that helps him scribe these apron front sinks with great accuracy. How he uses this jig is he takes one piece and makes a reference on the, let's say, bottom. So he starts there, draws his lines, and then actually scribes that piece to fit the bottom portion of the sink. He then does the same thing with the top where he references the top corner, scribes that piece, and makes sure that it fits properly. From there, he takes these pieces and screws them together, making them one jig, which then allows him to transfer his lines onto the face frame. Now here in the shop, we leave those parts of the frame a little bit wider, knowing that there's going to be a little bit of scribe that is needed, as well as extra material to go around the sink where it curves. Once he has this template laid out, he can then use a series of saws and sanders to scribe that sink just like you would any other scribe. So once we get these scribes, how are we attaching our face frames to the cases? Well, again, that takes another step back here into the shop where during fabrication, we actually use a series of dominoes and lamello fasteners to attach all of the face frames to the cases. This helps make alignment and fastening much easier and faster. Everything is done here in the shop in a controlled environment where we have the space to do so, rather than in the field where, where space can get a little bit tight, as you can see. Being able to do this ahead of time not only saves time, but it also results in a better product and it just makes James's install that much smoother. Once these frames are installed, 
we can move on to installing the doors and the drawer fronts. So let's take it back to here in the shop. By now you're probably wondering what these are behind me. So let's turn around and take a look at those. These are going to be closet doors for a complicated space. We're dealing with an angled ceiling. There's also an eave that comes out above these doors. So we couldn't have the shorter door swing open from the jam side. So all of the hinging has to happen on the longer jam side. So that means we're going to have a bifold set of doors. So we'll have some sauce hinges here in the middle and we're going to use some typical cabinet style hinges for this jam side, but they're a little bit different in the sense that they allow a lot more flexibility. These doors are going into an existing space with a lot of character. We needed to be a little bit flexible with some of the sizing and to get our reveals to be even, there's a couple funky things that we had to do here. On the back sides of these doors, you can see that we have this large rabbit. Now this is to allow the door to overlap the existing jam so that the front of the door is flush with the existing casing. So when you're looking at the wall, the entire wall looks panelized. Because the jams and casing are existing and the home does have a lot of character, we need to actually scribe this edge of the door to fit into that casing so that we get a nice even reveal all the way around the door. So we have to do this on both the jam side and on the top side of that casing. Once we're done, this will shrink to about a quarter of an inch. And then in some places it'll be a little bit more or a little bit less depending on what that scribe needs. However, on the front, it will be about a three and a half inch to match the cross pieces here as well as the styles in the center. Each set is slightly different and they're going to be about 15 feet apart in the room. So you're not going to notice the slight differences. Now let me show you how these hinges actually work. This here is just a quick mock-up that we did. If we look at this piece here, this represents the existing casing and this represents the face of that door. Yes, this is a flat panel door, whereas these ones are going to be more of a shaker style. That doesn't really make a difference for our test. It is simply to make sure that the face of our door at the styles is flush with the casing. So when we open it up, we do need to have a special type of hinge to allow for that overhang and to allow the door to actually open wide enough to get into the closet from under the eave. To do that, we ended up using these 155 degree hinges this allows that cabinet to fully open up right out of the way. And with that quarter inch detail here, as well as the overhang for the jam, we're able to pivot the door without there being any rubbing on these corners. The door also opens wide enough to give you full access into that closet. So as you can see, this is a test piece. We had to do a number of different setups with both of our offsets and our hinge locations to make sure that we were finding hinges and plate locations that were actually going to work and make this door function properly. Because these doors do need to be scribed on site and the goal is to have them look as if they were finished with the actual casing and the rest of the walls, we're gonna go ahead and have these doors painted right on site. In the same room, we have another interesting access panel that we need to fabricate. This one here is covering an HVAC unit, so it does need to be accessed from time to time. The tricky thing about this is that it's in between the center of a roof line. So right in that center pitch, the HVAC unit, it's a little bit off center, and we need to come up with a door that you could access. So we can't flip it up because of the roof line. We can't flip it open left and right because of the roof line. To make things a little bit more challenging, there's also a beam coming off the face of that door that is shallower than what the height of the door needs to be. So that means we can't even fold down the door without hitting the beam. We had to do a lot of research into this one to find out different products that would actually work in this application. There's plenty of hardware out there for laterally moving doors, but nothing for a vertical application. So if you look here, this is the mock-up of what this we're calling an HVAC panel would be. Now we do have the angled roof line where this panel will need to get clipped on the corners here, but we just wanted to test the hardware. In the end, the panel is going to look just like the doors. So they'll have that shaker kind of style, but we'll also have some louvers in here to allow the airflow around that HVAC unit. So the idea behind this door is that right now it's in place and it's closed. When it does need to be serviced or a filter needs to be changed, the technician can come and just pull this door right down 
access the area that he needs to access, and then push this right back into place. The motion of this mechanism allows the door to come out just a few inches and then drop down into place, tucking back against the wall. This is going to allow the technician, whoever's servicing that HVAC unit, and actually be able to safely move this panel without needing to readjust himself on the ladder. Because this door is going to be about 10 feet off the ground, we're going to add an additional mechanical latching system to ensure that this panel will never fall. There's still a lot more work that we need to do on this door as well as fabricate the actual panel itself. We'll make sure to keep you in the loop as this project progresses. And if you guys have any questions, please drop us a comment below and let us know. Subscribe, tell your friends, all that good stuff, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.